From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Billy Underwood, Johnny. They're trying to get you all over town. The hotel said to call you at this Skyline number. I'm out at Arnold Bennett's house. He's been shot. What? That's right. Well, who shot him? Don't know yet. I think I'm a transfusion here before they take him to the hospital. Uh-huh. Look, Johnny, I got something to show you. Yeah, what? Some ashes we just analyzed. The Bennett building was fired by a pro. He used celluloid and a wick made out of paraffin. I can prove it. I hope Bennett lives to hear that. <laughs> Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To the Four State Fire Insurance Corporation, 4065 Spear Boulevard, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Bennett arson fraud. Arnold Bennett was removed to the hospital where he was given a 50 50 chance of recovering from a 38 slug that had entered his chest. There was no weapon lying about and no witnesses in the remote, hilly section of San Francisco where he lived to give any information concerning the attempted murder. The police were more anxious than ever to find Tony Midas, the man Bennett had put the finger on earlier. Their reasoning was that if he could burn down a building worth half a million to get back at Arnold Bennett, he also might shoot him. I told Andy Cord about Underwood's findings when the police car got us to the scene of the shooting. Celluloid and paraffin wick, did you say? Yeah, that's what Bill Underwood said on the phone. Well, then it would point away from Tony Midas. He was an embezzler, not an arsonist. Maybe. Who's that policeman over there? Oh, that's uh, Inspector Dickens. Well, I talked to him about it for a while. He said Midas lived in San Quentin with a man named Hanley, a professional burner. Yeah. Well, Hanley could have taught Midas a few tricks of the trade. Yeah, it's possible, Jimmy. Uh, I don't know. At least Underwood is sure that he can prove it had an incendiary origin. Well, that's the first hurdle. Maybe we can't tie it to Bennett at that, Johnny, if Midas did it. Now, let's wait and see what Bennett has to say when he can talk. I think I'll get on over to the hospital. Okay. Oh, uh... Here's something that came up. Yeah? Now, you said Bennett attributed everything to this Tony Midas. Mm -hmm. Well, there might have been something personal in it, too. Midas is married to Bennett's niece, Elizabeth. He's what? Yeah, she married him a month before he was convicted. Well, that might explain some things. Yeah, she called me tonight and said she had some information for me about Midas. I was on my way to see her when this happened. Oh, you, you haven't talked to her yet, huh? No, no, let's see. It is 1038 Marauder Drive. Wonder if that's far from here. <laughs> no, Johnny, not far at all. This happens to be 1038, right here. Oh, well, we better tell the police about her, Andy. Andy Cord went on over to the hospital to await results on Arnold Bennett. I spoke to the inspector in charge and told him the information about Elizabeth Bennett. The police added the name to the APB already out for Tony Midas. And that's the way the case stood at midnight. By morning, the hospital reported that Arnold Bennett would recover from the gunshot wound. Elizabeth Bennett had not been located, nor had her husband, Tony Midas. I always fix my own dinner. Poached egg and half and half ulcers. The name's Dollar? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Insurance investigator. You want something, do you? Coffee, maybe? No, thanks, Mr. Engel. Mind if I finish? Go right ahead. What led you to me? The notations about the trial, Mr. Engel. You were the defense attorney for Tony Midas. We're anxious to talk to him. I defended him, yes. I don't think I'm going to be much help, Dollar. I haven't seen him since he got out. I've no idea where he is. We'll find him, Mr. Engel. And what's it all about? Well, Tony Midas has been identified as the man who started a fire in the Bennett building. Or at least who was seen in the vicinity of the building when it went up. I'm sorry to hear that. Are you, Mr. Engel? Tony Midas was a nice kid who got in a little trouble. Everything was against him at the trial. Bennett poured it on. He didn't have to, but he did. He could have let him off. You were Midas' lawyer. Did you try to talk Bennett into letting Midas off? No, I didn't. Nobody talks Arnold Bennett into anything. Oh? Tony never would admit taking the funds. He said he was framed, but he didn't have a prayer with all the evidence against him. Yeah, I read a transcript of the trial. 
then you know Tony Midas pleaded not guilty in the face of everything, and he went up. I wanted him to make a guilty plea and rest on the mercy of the court. It was his first offense. Well, he's out now, and it looks like he's trying to get even with Bennett for prosecuting him. All for a lousy ten grand. Yeah. Did he ever get in touch with you? I told you, no. No phone call? No. Do you have any idea where he'd be in town, Mr. Angle? No, I don't. Okay. Then I guess I'll leave you to your eggs. Uh, Dollar. Yeah. If, uh, if you find Tony Midas, I'd like to know about it. Why, Mr. Angle? Oh, just curious. I'd like to see him. I'd like to see what five years in prison does to a kid like that. Mr. Angle, Arnold Bennett was shot in his home last night. No. That's all you have to say? What else is there to say? Well, you could have asked, is he alive or is he dead, for one thing. Suppose I don't care. <sighs> okay, he's still alive. They think he'll pull through. Who do you think shot him, Mr. Engel? I don't know. They're looking for Tony Midas for that, too. Oh? Did you know Bennett's niece? Elizabeth, yes, I met her. Well, they're looking for her, too. She's married to Tony Midas. Yes, yes, I knew. I knew about that. Sit down, Mr. Engel. Oh, what is this going to be, an inquisition? That egg and that half and half doesn't interest you, no matter how much you look at it. Well, you ought to leave me alone and go find your fire bug. Come on, let's have the story. I don't know any story to tell you. Was it spite that sent Tony Midas to prison because of him and Elizabeth Bennett? No, no, they proved him a thief. I'll throw one more thing at you, Engel. Bennett wasn't always too good about paying his taxes. Now, look here, Our accounting don't... man has him pegged, pegged him for exactly what he is, an opportunist, a dodger... A man out to get what he can for as little as he can, no matter what. Yeah, we cover everything in a case like this. You'll never get Arnold Bennett. He's too good for you, Dollar. Too good for your insurance company, your fire investigators, everybody. No man stronger ever lived. We've already got evidence that proves the building was fired. I'm here to get all the story, and I think you're the man who can tell it. Why me? Because you work for him. I never worked for him, never. All right, we'll let that go for now. But you can tell me this. Was Tony Midas the kind of man who'd start that fire? You can tell me if he really was an embezzler. You can tell me if he tried to kill Arnold Bennett. I can't tell you anything for a fact, Dollar. All I have is my own personal opinion. Well, that's what I want. I want that. I'd like your opinion. Now, there's something about Bennett's niece being married to Midas, isn't there? A wife can't testify against her husband. Everyone else in Bennett's office testified against Midas. She didn't. I see. Now the opinion. Oh, come on, Engel, come on. You're right, Dollar, I have got ideas. All of them make me sick inside. Tony Midas stood there and told me he was innocent. He said it a million times if he said it once. He said he thought Bennett was framing him. To cover up from, for income tax shortages? It's just surmise, but it fits. Midas was a green kid hired into the company by Bennett. He might have been hired to be framed on a phony embezzling charge that would give Bennett a good excuse on his taxes for a while. I've... I've been fooled a lot of times. Did Tony Midas fool you? I don't know. I wish I could have gotten him off. I tried, Dollar. Believe me, I tried to get him off. You come here to me and say he's out of prison now and getting even. He's burnt down a building and tried to murder Arnold Bennett. Tony was a nice boy, Dollar. But now his whole life's gone, and for what? I hope you don't find him or her. I hope they go far away and stay away and don't have to talk to anybody ever. They deserve that. I hope nobody ever finds him. But we did find Tony Midas. He was right under our noses all the time. When I got back to the hotel, there was a message for me to get down to the county hospital. Cord was waiting for me there. They took us downstairs, and then we were both standing in a room looking at Tony Midas before they took him across the hall to the morgue. It's a funny thing, Johnny. There's been an alarm out on this guy for 36 hours. Everybody's been looking everywhere for him, and he turns up right here. Only he's dead. Yeah. What killed him? TB. He had it awful bad at San Quentin. It's in the sick ward his last two years. When his time was up last week, he made them release him. But he wound up here and died in this hospital. It's rough. He's just a kid. Yeah. Up until that time, there had been some kind of a case against Tony Midas. 
But obviously, since he had been dead almost two days, it was impossible to connect him with the attempt on Arnold Bennett's life and the firing of the building. So we were right back where we started from, trying to make a case against Arnold Bennett, who still lay in his hospital room and refused to talk to anybody who came near him. All right, Johnny, now what? Eh, Bennett's going to be hard. We're going to have to work around him. His niece is the best opening I can think of. I don't worry, she... Police haven't located her yet, no, huh? Not a trace. Andy, she had some information for me when she called last night. I still want to get Hi, it. If I... oh, oh, hello, Bill. We got a break. George Foley's in town. Who's that? Best celluloid and wick man in the country. If you happen to want a building burnt down. One of the policemen at the hospital spotted him in the lobby trying to see Arnold Bennett. Not entirely, Johnny. Where is he now? They followed him to an address on Barengo Street. They aren't going to move in until we decide something. Twelve minutes later, Andy Cord, Bill Underwood, and I were standing in front of a decrepit-looking boarding house on Barengo Street talking to the three policemen from the San Francisco Police Department. Dollar? Underwood? Hi. Hey, uh, what's the story, officer? Well, the way we see it, Foley's still trying to get part of his money for burning the building. He took a chance coming to the hospital tonight to see Bennett. No kidding. He'll probably make another try. Uh, you boys have more at stake here than anybody. If you want to talk to him, try to make a deal with him to turn on Bennett. Now's the time. Now, what do you say, Johnny? Oh, wait a minute. We aren't sure of anything about him. Well, he fills the bill, Johnny. Paraffin and wick jobs are few and far between. With nothing more than that, I'd stake my rep on Foley being our boy. For what it's worth, all three witnesses now pick his picture instead of Midas. Oh, well, a good defense attorney, get that thrown right out. What do you want to do? Oh, um, well, let's shake him up a bit, okay? Go ahead. We'll be covering the back and front. Come on. Watch out, Andy! All right, all right. That's enough. That's enough. You okay, Bill? Andy? Okay. Yeah. All right, tough boy. Get on your feet and let's get out of here. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, we have an arsonist right in the palm of our hands with very surprising results. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood, written by John Dawson. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs> 